Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Journey Beyond the Abyss. So, once more into the breach of making big ol' excavators, because we've only got one left. At least, we've only got one left for now. And it looks like we have just the right number of fencing in storage that if we just make one more batch, we'll have two sets for silos. We've, we've got our lovely get one free time right now yes so one more batch of fencing and two more batches of the sheet metal and we will be ready to just build the last of the silos for the moment there we go and Always easier to do this when you just count out the exact amount that you need. Ah, yes. Uh, between episodes, I built out the under platform a little bit. <clears throat> and I also um, experimented a bit with the red line, the blood pipeline. And I think that the problem just was that NPCs, custom NPCs, don't like being chunk loaded. They want to be constantly loaded. So I increased my render distance until until the uh, blood bank was back within proper full render. And and we'll see if that continues to work and if it's acceptable levels of lag. <clears throat> so just down here at the end of the line, We've got two more silos to put down. Oh yes, I should also get filter materials. As well as the proper pipes. Right, can't forget that it's not just the materials for the build itself that we need. So I think I need to actually build a few more clay pipes. Let's just get that done real quick. Get this a burn in. And over here, build me a couple of clay pipes. I'm gonna need two diamond. And I don't think I have any electrotine dust in storage. So I'm just gonna have to use a diamond and we'll let the last one filter itself into place just via default having no other path to go and leaving the diamond pipe completely unfiltered that should work. And then we can filter it afterwards. Ah yes, I also realized between episodes that um, my tin wasn't going up because I forgot to run the lava pipe over to the tin smeltery. And that was thankfully just like a 15 second fix. The utilidor was already there, you know? I just forgot to hook it up, so that was embarrassing. And up we go. This line of silos is so freaking huge. I probably should have designed it so that there was a space between each of them. It would make it even longer, but it would at least make this traversable. As it is, I'm probably going to have to start, like... I'm probably going to have to put, like, in the center of the line an underpass to get through this area. Or something. The base is starting to get to the point that I need to consider personal logistics. Ugh. And the rain. Always with the rain in this place. It's like we're in England or something. Okay, I should have some tinder in storage somewhere. place that down. It'll help a little bit. Alrighty then. So, while we gradually get to the point that we're not dying anymore, let's just start placing down the base of this one silo here. And let's see if we can build it up before we start dying again. 
But yeah, I definitely missed the pretty base where I had a roof over my head and this wasn't a problem. I can't wait until we reach the point in the pack where uh, there is a device in thermal dynamics that will basically be that beer hat I was pining for earlier on in the series that will automatically keep me watered and help me with thermoregulation a little bit. Okay, and now we need to run pipe under here. And that is going to be a clay pipe on top. And this one will be acting like most of our double products will, where we are going to just be um, voiding them both and only basing the control system on one side of it. And I believe on this one, the one side will in fact be the Electrotene, even though it's the rarer product, because it is honestly probably the more useful one right now. But yes, here you see the expanded under platform. I just, I just kind of cancered it out into the east here. And I believe I removed an unnecessary mosaic block. We might as well keep the pretty pattern going. So then we can come down here. And as well as over here. And then we need diamond down there. Diamond down there. You know, if I wanted to put the effort in, I could probably move this entire pipeline so it's up on this level and make it so that I can just walk under it. It would be a lot of work, though, to move this entire pipeline. Hmm. Well, not a lot, a lot of work, but it would be something that I would do between episodes because it would take a little while to reprogram each and every one of the diamond pipes. Okay. So. Now we have the pipe basically programmed. We are still going to have to come down here again with um, a bit of electrochine once we have it coming in. Because these probably won't be the last silos. If nothing else, eventually I'm going to have to start mining up bauxite for the aluminum. I'm probably eventually going to want to mine up autonite. I think we're going to need that next chapter. But this is the last one we're going to need for now. Alright, and thankfully, this is a relatively easy one that we've got here. This one doesn't need no smeltery. It just needs, it just needs a good old fashioned um, scabby boy and, hmm. I don't think we have enough glue. No, we don't. Well, time to make more glue. So I'm gonna need to grab this ash, I do believe. No, 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 not ash. I'm going to need to grab a little bit of wood to make pulp. Going to need to cut a little bit of wood to make pulp. Easy enough. All right, bone meal. I don't think these trees grow without bone meal. I'm not sure. Ah, yes, as you might see, I've also run into a couple of art merchants and I picked up um, purple dye as an alternate to our black pipe. I'll, I'll eventually make a uh, eight stacks of purple wire, and that should be enough to satisfy our need for a third color of wire every so often. And it is my favorite color. We might as well use it instead of instead of a drab, gothy black. I mean, black is fashionable. It goes with everything, but uh, it's not my fashion, you know. Did I pick up? Ah, no. Here we go. I thought I picked up exactly what I needed. And we are going to need Mr. Lumberjank, as well as a Schulker box. Schulker crate. 
There's a word for it. Shulker, shulker crate. That's a common. Ah, hello, computer wizard. Lovely to see you. How did the rest of the stream go once I dipped out? Uh, sorry I wasn't able to stay long, by the way. Did anyone else show? Did you at least have a fun time? And did you finally figure out the rest of your technical problems? Those are probably the three most important things to ask. With the most important one being, did you have fun? Oh, well. We'll, we'll call that fate. Yes. Ah, well. That's kind of how a testing stream goes, anyway. You don't stick around long. You just kind of get yourself comfortable in front of the camera again. Indeed. So did you figure out what was causing OBS to eat up all of your system resources? Because uh, that is distressing. I, I don't know... OBS uses practically nothing for me. And I think I just have it on medium settings. I haven't done anything particularly... Like, I've upped the bitrate on the stream a little bit a couple of times until the video issues stop being quite so obvious. Like, the first couple of streams I did, the, the audio... Well, no, the audio quality was down to me using Shadowplay instead of OBS. YouTube just didn't like didn't like working with shadow play. But um Yeah, when I switched back to OBS, I had to up the bitrate on my video a couple of times cuz I was getting lots of artifacts on the stream, but other than that, it's worked fine. Okay. Get you put away. You. Ah, that might cause issues, yeah. And there's not really much you can do for that other than downgrading your quality, I suppose. Anyway, yes, as you can see... I'm refilling the wood in the creosote machine, mostly because I need some more wood to make some glue. Because we have one last excavator and crusher to make. And yes, it is just excavator and crusher. We don't even need a uh, smeltery today. Although I might make a smeltery or two today for fun once we finish this project. Time permitting. Anyway, yes, let's just make that pulp. Ah, well, I'll have to sneak by your channel and watch the VOD and see um, see if that if that worked. If you were able to continue the stream after changing the settings, well, uh, I'll have to take a look and see how that looks for you. I hope it works out well. You sound like you've got a you've got a pretty good project. I'd love to see it in development, and you, you've got a pretty good voice for commentary, man. I'm definitely looking forward to. I hope that you're going to be able to stream your D and D games. Oh boy, lag is real. Maybe that idea of uh, increasing my render distance in order to get the custom NPCs. Ain't quite so, uh, hot. Hmm. Ah, well, so it goes. Okay, that should do it for the wood pulp. Now I just need to go and grab some slim. All right, well. Good luck, man. I'm looking forward to it. 
Okay, so now we just need the clay balls. Oof. Yeah, frames are tanking. I might not be able to sustain this big long render distance. Why aren't they tanking now though? And in this area too. Hmm. Is it that Aurora? Is that Aurora effect like unwanted for my frame rate? Either way, let's let's turn that down. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, that helps a little, but not a lot. I'm just tanking my frames tonight for whatever reason. Hmm. Unknown. All right, let's throw you into here. Because, yeah, I'm going to need a few more clay balls. Blocks, rather. Just in order to squeeze them up. I could use clay balls for this. But this is easier to calculate. And then we just need to program this with the wood pulp like this. And the clay balls like this. And that'll get us a lovely 60 glue, enough to make all the hoppers that we need right now. Hmm. Once I automate wood, I'll be able to make a completely automated um, glue machine if I want to. That would be interesting. In any case... All right. Well, I'll be. De I, I am subscribed to you, so hopefully, hopefully YouTube's notifications will cooperate, and I'll be able to just. Uh, I'll be able to show up from time to time. Uh, one thing I have found that helps supposedly with notifications is, in OBS, when you're starting the stream, make sure that you schedule the stream for immediately. Apparently, apparently scheduling the stream helps out with notifications for whatever reason. Okay, so, first of all, let's just make the nine hoppers, because that's the hardest part of the crucer. And I need more chests. Of course I need more chests. So do I have... Uh, yeah, I've got some iron nuggets in there. Cool. Um, like, in the, in the manage broadcast thing, just have the box at the bottom checked saying schedule stream and just, you know, accept immediately for the time, you know? Oh, looks like I need to use these. Oh, well, so that's 8, 16, good enough. Actually, no, wait, I have 24 nuggets, don't I? Ah, oh, but I, it, it needs to be done five at a time because of... Hello, 12th Century Fox, welcome to the stream. Yeah, we are just working on the last of uh, the current infrastructure projects at the moment. So that'll be five, ten, fifteen chests. As well as these iron nougats. Let those all craft up, and then we'll finally be able to just make the hoppers for the crucer. Let's just grab a couple of stacks of iron over here to help out with that. Um. Yeah, um... Foxy should be able to locate his channel through um through like on the chat just now if you if you mouse over computer wizard's name there should appear like three little dots and you should be able to go to his channel through there I think
as for the notification, well, that's just kind of, uh, that's YouTube being YouTube. All right, so put our glue over in there. And now we have the nine hoppers. All right, so what else do we need to make the crucer and the excavator? That we're working on right now. Crusher. We're going to need 10 steel scaffolding, one redstone, 10 light. Up here, one redstone, 10 light. As well as a bunch of steel scaffolding. And then we're gonna need a bunch of fencing, right. There we go. Yes, but your commentary and your, uh, your talking about your plans was still very interesting, Computer Wizard. And you did manage to show off your world quite well even going through the lag. So it was still a very interesting stream. A very promising stream. I want to keep these. Okay, so that's the... That's the Crucer. And then... Let's see, we're going to need a total of... 26... Scaffolding for the excavator. Yes, remember that number. 26 is the number of the crucer. And we need more steel rods. Thankfully, I do remember that I have an excess of them over here. Cool. I should probably put more in for the next time, but meh. Okay, a little bit more. Yeah, it, it was kind of just a setup stream, but it was very promising for things to come. Okay, and then for Excavator, we're going to need 15 sheet metal, 1 redstone, 9 light, 5 heavy. 5 heavy. 9 light. 1 redstone. And then it's just the 15 sheet metal, as well as... I should have... Ah, here we go. And there we go. Okay, so that is everything except for the radiator blocks. Which are easy to just craft up real quick. Oh, do you at least remember where the songs come from? Might be able to help you find them. I've been browsing a lot of copyright free music lately for Syrup Leaf. And then we have all this fluid pipe that we dug up from replacing the bloodline, the red line. Hmm. I've never heard of that show. The only free, the only copyright free music I've spotted that was supposedly made for an RPG series was this one song on Scott Buckley's collection. But it doesn't sound like that. that's what you're looking for. Ah, unfortunate. Unfortunate indeed. Alright, so now we have another industry in a box over here. Let's just walk on down to the nearest Kimberlite, which should be really close by. Sphalerite. 
the remnants of this tree. Might as well pick it up. We can always use more sticks. If nothing else, sticks are useful for making all the uh, wooden cogs for our... Ah, and here is Kimberlite. And I believe this chunk should already be loaded. It's already on the line. Yeah, it's on the big line going down to the old, unfortunately defunct copper area. So, we already know that there's Utilidor coming down this line. We already know that... Uh, that everything is all set up. It's all nice and easy. This is the best possible position we could ask for, really. So let's just put things in the corner so that they're nice and out of the way. And let's get set up. So let's start. Oh, right. I need the nine steel blocks for the excavator. Such an arduous crafting process for those these days. Oh, it just doesn't get any easier, does it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> oh, and uh, I, I figured out what the problem was with this. It was that I accidentally assigned something else to the, uh, the color green. Or lime, or whatever it is properly called. Yeah, so I didn't bother, um... Yeah, I, I accidentally assigned something else to lime, so I just changed the color on this and on that, and it's working fine now. It's back to working just fine. Um, anything else I'm going to need while I'm thinking about it? I'm going to need the block of... Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to need a piece of redstone dust for the, for the crusher. Yes, we remember that for once. Huzzah! Even if we did remember it last minute and on an unnecessary trip back to the base. Still, huzzah! I guess this is kind of my informal wood storage, so we'll just throw those in there. Okay, so... Where do we want to put things? Um, let's see here. Let's get the full scavy boy out into our into our awaiting arms and let's put the nine steel blocks away. And as well as the sheet metal. Just while we decide where it needs to go. So tradition would dictate kind of keeping it close to the edges of the map. Like maybe here-ish. Yeah, maybe, maybe, baby. And then... Coming on just down, like so. I think I can mostly remember how to build one of these. So that goes up all three spaces. This goes up the last two spaces. Then it's like... These. And that kind of just covers up over there. Then it's like these. And these. You can tell that I've built a lot of these at this point. And then I think, okay, it's like heavy over here. And this is where I never remember how it goes. All this jank in the back. So, yeah. Okay, so, heavy, redstone, heavy. Okay, cool. Redstone goes on the radiator side, then heavy on top of it. Okay, cool. And that should assemble. Yep. All right. Now we just kind of need to put a couple of torches on it, just to keep it, re keep it from... Um, where do my torches go? Ah, they're in my hand still. Of course, derp. And now we just need to build the wheel. So the wheel starts like right there. Yeah, let's 
eliminate that bearing because we are going to need to peek in to hit it as well as it serves as a nice check for our position. Okay, so then one, two... <laughs> hey Fox, when you get to this point, do you think that you're going to... Uh, you're going to be better at building these uh, these immersive engineering multi-blocks simply because you've seen me do it so many times? Are, are you kind of memorizing the pattern along with me in this? <laughs> uh, it's an educational stream. Build along. Oh, uh, yeah. I kind of almost derped this right over the over the uh, Utilidor line. Oh, boy. But that just means it'll be it'll be nice and easy to find in the future. Okay, so then and then we can just like so and like so and that should complete the view. So if I just kind of... Oh, also, between episodes, I finally did uh, experiment with with peat, uh, with peat bogs to see if they were an easier path towards infinite ash. And the answer is, unfortunately, that all the automated ways of doing them requires... requires appetite. So, it doesn't require a super duper amount of appetite, but also, all the methods of getting peat automatically are very, very, very slow. Like, maybe if you had two peat bogs running under optimal conditions, they might be able to get you a stack of, a stack of peat in two hours. Yeah, they're slow. All right, so next. Next, next, next. I suppose there's no reason I can't just kind of put the crucer right here. Yeah. So, I think you can just go like, so, and output on this way, of course, because that's just how we're going to want it. So, doop, doop. And now I can never remember which side the redstone goes on this. So, with it. It would go on right here. Cool. And then we just kind of circle the fencing around. Place a the hopper. And that should assemble. Huzzah! So, any blank spots up on you? Not looking like it. Cool. Cool beans. Alright, so now we just need to decide where we want the power and how to handle lo the logistics. So, for the first step of logistics, we're going to need two chests. Car and car. And the utilidor should be like right down here, right? Yeah, right down there. Unfortunately, there's a power cable crossing right there, so it has to be on this side. Unfortunately, there's a power cable crossing right over there, so... Yeah, it would have to be right here, I think. So that means we need to jank the... to jank the uh, pipe a little bit, but so it goes. Uh, yes, and we're also going to want to make two outputs off of this one. One for each of the potential goods, just so that it can't get jammed 
like if it fills up with one and is like on a round robin or something. So we'll just like do it here and here, I guess. And then, oh no, wait, 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 here and here. And then we'll use an iron pipe here in order to direct the output down a single, am I out of iron pipe? Huh, that's a new one. Been a while since I ran out of iron pipe. Use it relatively rarely. Well, let's fix that real quick. The joys of building close to the base. It won't take a while even when I forget a million things. We'll just very easily get this done. Yeah, there we go, that's good enough. So I'm gonna need at least two of them. Oh, eh, I made more than I expected. There, keep the stack. That'll last probably practically forever. Unless we need to do something like build a bunch more of those um, of those biodiesel farms. Those ate up a lot of iron pipes. All right, so iron pipe on there, and that is just going to go straight down into the underground. We made it safe for the for little Timmy there just in time. He didn't fall down the well. We're the hero. We're the hero of this story, he says as he continues raping the land. Okay, so... Unfortunately, it looks like this isn't the most convenient entrance to, to the Utilidor for this particular s juncture. Okay, so... Then the pipe kind of just runs... Oh, I need to jank it around this too, of course. Hmm. Can I afford one more? No. Damn. Well, you know what? We'll just kind of... Hmm. Eh, yeah. Let's just... There. And then it is going to need iron pipe going down that way. Good, it figured out the right direction first try. Just out of pure luck, I suppose, or just remembered that there used to be a pipe going down that way, I guess. All right, so that is the primary output handled. Next, we need the logic for how this is going to work. So we're going to need a bit of structural pipe. So that is going to go over here as well as all the way over here. I think that needs to run under. Yeah, that should do. All right, and next we need some gates. We need some pipe wire. So you are going to have blue wire right there, gate right there, oops. And double oops. There, that's better. And you are going to say, when not blue signal, emit redstone. Because we're just going to run this pipe wire on down. All the way. Make our usual control system on this thing. I think you know how this goes by now. You say, inventory on bottom side, when less than 75%, emit blue signal. And then over here, we put our, we put our oh so prissy, oh so smancy, schmancy uh, 
block and bit of redstone dust because the crusher just has to be a prima donna. And we say, when not blue signal, emit redstone. Okay, and now all we need is the power. So let's make a pass through right here. And oh, also I just realized that, uh, yeah, when I went down here, I accidentally interrupted the, uh, the redstone cabling right when I was running, when I was running that through the, uh, the, the logistics line through. So we need to restore that, the functionality, of course. So I'm going to need a connector, going to need a bit of redstone. Uh, da, 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 da. Got the redstone cable. I wonder where the connector went. I guess it just disappeared. But I should be able to put this like right here. And then that'll connect over here as well as all the way downtown over there. And that'll restore functionality. Cause yeah, I think I turned gold off and that's why that line started up again. Cause it interrupted the signal. So we should see this turn off question mark. At least it'll shut the copper off for sure. Yeah, there it goes. Okay. Yes, be very careful not to interrupt your signal. If you want accurate controls. All right, so we're gonna need two power nipples as well as two more. And we're gonna need our HV coil. So just right over there. And there is a relay right there, so I don't need to bother making any sort of fancy line up to it. Ah, the beautiful power squid. Usually native to India. All right, and then... Right there. Make the pass through. Beautiful. And then... We're going to need... Let's see here. If I put a relay right here, can that connect? It do. And then I should be able to put power here. And power here. There we go. All right. And oh, right, 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 right. Need to create line from this chest over into Cruiser. And that is just going to be an always on one. We never want that chest full. That is simple and easy. Just up and over and in. And yes, it'll have to sort through the dross, but then here comes that beautiful Kimberlite. And look at that. All right, so here we have Electrotine and Diamond. So this pipe will be specifically for Diamond. This pipe will be specifically for Electrotine. And then we need to create the control system for this. That is just going to be two pulsars, two gates. Dupe, dupe, and dupe, dupe. And that is going to be as long as no redstone pulse the pipe. And then I should be able to put a redstone connector on this particular pipe right here. And that should reach both of these controls without interfering with this, I hope. Let's try that real quick. Let's, uh... Oh, I don't have a lever on me. Shoot. 
Do I have like a block of redstone or something? Do I have anything on me that can create a signal? Not really. Hmm. Well, let's connect those anyway. Just real quick. Change this to an output. And let's just go grab a block of redstone. Should have some over in here. Ah, well, I mean, that does sound fun. Do whatever you want, man. It is your channel, and if you think that you're going to have fun with it, that's the most important thing. So, yeah, there we go. Now, that is not affecting these. Hmm. Did... I mean, you should be receiving signal from that, right? Like, you shut off? Oh, because now that's interfering with you, right. Okay, so this positioning for, for this is untenable anyway. Okay, so, 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 we can't have the extractor there. I think that I can just, um, hold on, let's just get rid of the system entirely. Yeah, I think I unfortunately need to move that relay now because it needs to be under. It must be under. So, down here under the base, we can put that... And where did my other one go? And that. And then an iron pipe right there. Going down that -um way. And then a redstone connector, like, right there. Maybe? No, it would have to be... It would have to be going to each one specifically, I think. Hmm. Well, regardless, let's put the controls back on this. So let's make this one the electrotine one, because that's kind of the most important one anyway. And this is the one I obviously know I can control. So you say when no redstone pulls pipe. And I'm going to have to get topside to reach that other one. Where was that stairway? Getting lost in my own utilidors. What a world. All right, so. Then up here, you, no, you still can't be there. You can't be there. Okay, so, yeah, you need to come off up here then. So, uh, just shut you off. And I think the iron pipe, unfortunately, needs to be right here. There, yeah, that should work and then you can return to previous behavior if I can 
snag that gate. There we go. And meanwhile, you can now say on no redstone pulse pipe. And now I should be able to put a direct connection on both these pipes. Yes, by all means, uh, go ahead. Uh, use my use my channel however you see fit, including for random communications. Yes, and that connects properly. Sweet. Okay, cool. So, set this to output. Then need to figure out what color these are going to be. As well as need to remember that I need to go back and filter that diamond pipe leading into the silo. Mustn't forget that chore. It has probably just been going into the silo simply because it has no other choice and this diamond pipe is unfiltered. Yeah, see, the electrotine dust is going up there no problem right now, but we must be specific for the future when we expand this line inevitably. Now. Eeny, beeny, whiny, schmo. What is the color to which you shall go? Oh, I never made a control system for these guys. Okay, well, we can fix that real quick. Okay, so, tin, and then this guy, and then Electrotine shall be the controlling agent of this guy. So, for this one, let's see, lime, pink, gray is steel, light gray shall be tin. And cyan shall be electrotine, appropriately enough. Oh, jeez. Dang, nighttime. Sprinting will get your body temperature up a little bit. So turn it daytime, sprint around. Just try not to freeze to death. Need to go and get some redstone dust for this system anyway. All right, so we're going to need uh, about 14. I think it's seven on each one, isn't it? And yeah, I'm going to need to hunt down some more levers if I can't just put this off until I can make some more. Okay. And there. Now, can this reach just fine over to your neighbor? You can. Cool. All right. Yeah. And hopefully, hopefully the next time, uh, the next time computer wizard uh, does a stream, then the both of us will be there. And uh, yes, of course, anyone watching the stream right now and in the future, do feel free to check out Computer Wizard's channel. He'll hopefully be getting some good content out, and uh, and I'll I'll be hanging out in his in his chat, time permitting, and uh, we can hopefully get a good thing going over there. Okay, so you are cyan, right? Okay. God, the villagers are so rude. Just shoving me all over the place as I'm trying to work on this delicate process. Yeah, you lick that power cable. You deserve it. And of course, also, everyone watching, 
Fox's playthrough of JBTA is wonderfully entertaining. He has stories to tell. He has things to do. By all means, give it a watch. It is very well worth the time. You can consider those to be my full endorsement and shout out to both of those channels. For all the tiny amounts of clout that I have. Check it out, everybody. Oh, hush. You're only going slow because you're deliberately not, like, doing a bunch of research beforehand and uh, nerding up JBTA. You are, you are the proper experience of how most people are going to experience JBTA playing it casually. Which is enormously entertaining watching the game troll you. Because, yes, a lot of those, a, a lot of the things that are slowing you down is the pack being built to troll you. Yeah, I know, I, I get him too every once in a while. It's, it's unusual, but, uh, but he seems to be sincere. At least he's not posting, like, at least he's not posting, um, posting, like, spam links and phishing attempts and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I know. The trolling doesn't ever stop from getting bigger. I know. Ah, yes. And I think I even... Yes, I, I set this up, but I, I never... Because I, I need to go and look up what color these should be. So, these are going to be outputs on channel Light Gray. There we go. And then we just need to... Uh, get this back to the Utilidor somehow. I don't think I ran Redstone down to here, did I? Not looking like it. So that's a quick project. We're just gonna need... Uh, we're gonna need our connectors. Follow the line on down to wherever the nearest connection point is. That'll do. So, just over here. I am definitely growing an abiding love for these uh, redstone wires. They are wonderful for remote control. And there we go. All right, now this is gonna be a little bit of a jank to get this into here. I think what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to run it along the floor over here. I don't think these things get uh, scooped by water, do they? Not looking like it. Yeah, they work just fine underwater. So then can I sneak it through there? No, obstructed. So it has to then be dupe and dupe yeah he's um he's very friendly he just leaves comments like great video without much other content in it but uh he's he's very friendly very enthusiastic i mean and, and to be fair, it might just be that he has an underdeveloped channel. Like, um, before you started posting your JBTA run, I would call your channel probably like a, uh, a, a German nature channel or something, Fox. Because that's pretty much all you had posted was random pictures of, uh, of stuff like you found around town, like little cute animals and stuff like that. So it could just be that 
that you know he likes posting about pretty places around Russia. Okay, put away everything. I'll even put away the torches. And now we have a nice clean inventory. We have a nice clean setup of everything. Indeed, indeed. I mean, what is the internet for if not making friends in unusual places? Repository of all mankind's knowledge? Pfah. No, it's all about those weird friends you make along the way. All right, so we have electrotine, diamond, we have lead, silver, tin, gold, sulfur, charcoal, we have clay clay balls, sand, gravel, glowstone, redstone, copper, steel, fully automated steel, proud of that one. We have nickel, we have iron, and we have cobblestone. And this space is reserved for an eventual automation of wood. I think that we've got... Uh, my, my goals for this chapter were to have fully automated, or at least as close to fully automated as I could, engineering blocks, and to have all the basic resources handled. I think... I think I'm doing pretty good on that regard. So, really, the only thing left to do before I consider all my goals to be done is we need to finish automating this. I don't think I'm going to need too much more in the way of these heavy engineering blocks. I mean, we might need some more excavators. Down. I know we're going to need some more excavators down the line. We're at least going to need Autonite mined up. And eventually we're going to need bauxite mined up. So yeah, it might be convenient to have a few more, but I don't... Eh. Anyway, anyway, yeah. So to finish the automation of this, we're going to need to auto-create steel mechanical components, electrum ingots, bronze gears, bronze blocks, and bronze ingots. That's another thing, is um, this will complete the automation for these guys and this will be incredibly useful we're going to need tons of forestry machines for the next chapter as well as just for finishing up this chapter so let's work on the automation for this big old chonky boy so i'm gonna do bronze first because that'll cover the most of it so I think that what I'm going to do for bronze is somewhere under the base, I'm going to make an auto smeltery similar to our steel foundry. And I'm just going to run a liquid pipe from it, like right up through here, I think. That'll be running liquid bronze. Oh, this is a congested area. Of course it is. But we'll have a liquid pipe of liquid bronze coming up through there. And do I have a, uh, a ladder anywhere nearby? Yeah, I do. And uh, these chests, these chests were kind of being used for manually inputting wood and stuff in here, but I'm gonna change these to be casting tables and casting basins. So let's get that built already, just so that we know it's in place. All my seared brick is over in the masonry workshop, I guess. So let's make one casting basin and two casting tables. And I think I have a spare gear cast from the old copper pump jack somewhere. Yeah, here we go. And I'll just temporarily steal a uh, steal a ingot cast from here. I'll recreate that like the next time I uh, 
the next time I um, need to make ingots and I realize that I don't have all the casts. That'll just be a nice surprise to my future self, I suppose. Oh, no, wait, not these, not these, not these. These are actually being used for something. That one isn't. So that one can be bronze ingots, or no, that one can be bronze gears. These two, though. These two are in need of guidance. Yeah, just take that wood out of there. So you, I guess, will be bronze ingots. You clear? You clear? Yep. And you will be bronze blocks. And we'll just run that liquid pipe up. So, you see what my plan here is? Basically, as soon as I make that bronze smeltery and link this pipe up, then all the bronze that this system needs will be handled. I think that's a pretty elegant solution for, uh, for the logistics of getting into the mechanical uh, artisan. And then, after that, we should only have um, one more thing that needs to be done. The mechanical... Um, the mechanical um, components, and we can put those right there. I suppose that does leave wood as an eventual problem, though. Hmm. Yeah, we might need to make this thing a bit taller, maybe. Maybe. Hmm. Where to get... Oh, no, wait, there's a slot there. There's a slot there that'll work for wood. Cool. I could lay that out right now and just have it ready for when I have wood automated just to pipe it in. Eh, we'll consider it. Anyway, in the meantime, let's build a smelter. Let us build a, uh, a lovely little alloy smelter. Let's put this wood away. Eh, you know, I need to clean this out. Because I should be running some additional, uh... I should be running some of the sequoia wood through this, just so that I have it as, uh, building blocks. Alright, and... oh, gear cast. Right, one of the tables is missing that. You are missing that. Cool. And there we go. And how's the saw blade doing? Not good. Oh boy. You know what? Let's just throw that out and make a new one. Okay, and I should have a little bit of diorite still. Well, technically I have a lot of diorite still because of the centrifuge system over on the sand maker. Sand and clay maker. Yeah, if I look in here, I should have uh, a goodly supply still of, uh, let's see, there's limestone, there's andesite, and yet there is diorite. And can I convert that into pebbles any which way? I should be able to somehow. No, no, yeah. Well, that's unfortunate. But yeah, eventually that box will fill up and then pebbles will be building up in here. So, uh, yeah. The centrifuge. The, um... The centrifuge is definitely... Is definitely a nice... I, I endorse it as an alternative to getting a silt excavator. Much more power efficient. Um, the only problem with it is it produces clay much slower than an excavator does. 
And I'm not so sure if the sand is competitive either. It produces gravel a hell of a lot faster. If you want gravel, there's a source of gravel for you. Don't know what you would particularly want gravel for immediately. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Enough of that silliness. Make the saw blade get the stuff going. Right. So, diamond, gold. Don't seem to have much flint in storage right now. Don't seem to have much. Ooh, that does sound enticing. I'm not super duper familiar with Shadowrun. I mean, the most experience I have with it is I played um, that old Sega Genesis Shadowrun game. <laughs> it was a good game. I don't think I played it all the way through. Do I have any flint anywhere? Ah, I have a little bit. Not enough even to smash it in the artisan table, but enough for our purposes. All right, and then we can just do the cog dance, I think. The saw dance, rather. Oh yeah, you were asking, Fox, like, is there a difference between between the flint and the bone saw. Let's see here, let's see here. So in the stone saw mill, the flint blade would get you two products out of every craft, and the bone would get you two products out of every craft. So no, there is literally no difference. Unlike with uh, the diamond and the, and the, uh, and the obsidian. Yeah, with, with the diamond saw blade, you get three out of each craft, and out of the obsidian, which has more slightly more durability, but if you look at it, you only get two. So I think that... Uh, ah. I think that the diamond is slightly more efficient just because it gives you... It gives you that additional product. So let's clear this out of our hands. Let's see here. Net. I suppose I can put Pete over in here. Oh, yeah. I mean... <laughs> There's a reason that was one of the first things I rushed for when I when I got to your current chapter. Uh, what chapter is that? Chapter three? Yeah, I think that as soon as I got into chapter three, one of the first things I rushed was the refractory kiln. And it, uh, yeah. J.E.I. tries to tell you, man. It tries to tell you. You just need to comprehend it. Anyway, okay, so. With that frivolity aside, it is now time to begin creating the smelter of the day. We're actually going to eventually need two smelters because I need to make Electrum too. So let's do that right away. Let's see here. And I'm going to need slightly more masonry brick than that. Gonna need like 56 in total, I think. Yeah, I think that's exactly what I need. Let's try it out. Let's, uh, oh wait, that's not quite. That's not quite what I need. There we go. And then go into these okay need just a few more rock 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, man. I'm, I, I'm, I'm a watching you struggle, and uh, I'm, I, I'm sometimes having to hold my tongue a little bit, try not to over direct you, because I know you're gonna punish yourself worse than I ever could. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, looks like I'm out of. Let's see, how am I doing on flint clay? I need to go and farm up some more flint, it's looking like. Okay, that's quick and easy. So let's just get that. I don't have any means of automatically making flint yet, do I? That's a no. I'm pretty sure villager trade is disabled in this pack. All right. So, we are officially at risk of death by derp now. We'll just have to make sure that I remember to put the suit on before I get back up on the platform. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I'm definitely feeling smarter tonight without my stomach constantly rebelling against me. Ugh, let me tell you, yesterday slash earlier today was unpleasant. Thankfully, though, food poisoning is one of those that, uh, it takes care of itself in short order. But man, I can't believe you filmed out to 28 already. You don't do short episodes, man. So that is a tremendous amount of work you've already put in. I mean, at the rate you're going, you might very well catch me up. Simply because you're able to record so much more to time than I am. Like, these streams are pretty much... You're, you're seeing all the recording time I have, man. Minus occasional days where I'm just not feeling it. Yeah, you think? Oh, boy. All right. And we must be very careful not to leave any... any red spots on the seafloor as we're doing this. definitely make sure that uh, we don't leave any spawnable space because if it happens to be a three tall space and it spawns an enderman that might very well be the end of us we aren't exactly walking around wearing protective armor most of the time I mean it's very protective against the thing most likely to kill me just not protective against monsters yeah I hear you man I hear you Brain fog is real. Okay, up into here. Get to some wonderful life saving tinder real quick. And while we warm up, let's get into. Let's not die to our own stupidity this time. Okay. And then can put away some of that. Yeah, I mean, my PC is hating me and I don't exactly have a weak PC. It's getting intensive, man. It's getting intensive. What I'm hoping is that in the future, I get some better logistics options, and I can cut down on the janky pipes, and that'll eventually save us a little bit of frames. Lag bust? How does one lag bust? Is that like a specific mod? 
because under the rules of the challenge, I'm not allowed to add any more mods. Um, I mean, I was using only, only, um, 16 for the longest time. And honestly, I could probably continue making it with 16 if I optimized a bit more. So with 32, you should be golden. At least I think so. Okay, so... And then... Into there, into there. Hmm. Well, I don't use a super lot of redstone. The only two redstone dust contraptions I have are the single dot of dust on each and every crusher, the uh, redstone pulser down here in the cobble gen, and the redstone clock for the smelter. Hmm. Well, I mean, nine is more than I was able to give it when I was only on 16 gigs. Okay, so next... Thankfully, limestone is very easy to grab right now. If I just run over here, pick up, like, a stack of it. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you're running Java 64-bit edition, man. And as well as the uh, latest version that can, that can handle uh, Minecraft 1.12. I think that would be Java Edition 8. Unfortunately, that failure rate got us a bit there. But then we can just over into here. Make a ton of that. Uh, I could do that real quick. Let's see here. Performant. No, it was under... Uh, da, 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 da. I've turned potion particles off. But you probably mean the more general... I'm not sure where that is with Optifine in the pack. Uh, t -t 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 details? No. Performance? No. Quality? Other? I, I guess it is specific to this then. Well, I guess I can do... Um... Oh, no, wait, there it is. Particles decreased or minimal, yeah. Let's see if that helps. Helps a little. Helps a little. Okay, and how's the fuel? I'm probably going to run out of charcoal flakes sooner or later. Simply because I switched to a refractory burner so long ago and that stopped giving me tons of charcoal flakes. Hmm. Betrayed by my own success. Oh, the problems of privilege. Okay, and then over in here. Make of the slick. Jake the Slake, and then make the refractory. Yes, yes. It's it's a terrible, terrible problem. Okay, make all those brick, and chuck those into the machine. And let's go grab some more pulp, because I think I'm going to need that. Over in here. And let's just grab a little bit. Hmm? Which particular recipe? You mean, um... You mean the, um, using the artisan tables? 
you you filmed up until you get artisan tables. That's tremendous progress, man. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a huge help. It's pretty much the thing that allows you to start scaling up to making things by the stack, you know. Not quite enough. Need a bit more refractory clay than that, but I have this, thankfully. So we're gonna need seven of them in total. And then... Gonna need... Oh? You figured out some cheese. That sounds glorious. Which particular cheese did you did you figure? Or do you mean that you actually just buckled down and cheated or what what what's up, man? Okay, and there we go. So that is effectively the hard part of smelteries done. Ah, well, I mean, seven iron bars. Did you did you eventually realize that you could just go to the constructs out on the ocean, including the starter platform that had the iron the iron blocks, and uh, start digging those up? Because um, yeah, that that is um, enormously helpful. Having access to iron early on, yeah. As well as just finding iron bars around is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Gonna need a little bit of... Gonna need to make my filters. I should make those right now. So... Let's just make... This many... Worth of iron bars... Yes, indeed. There is a reason that I rushed for the melter as soon as possible, dude. There is very much a reason why I decided, screw that shit, I'm out, when it came to the the forging. And I tried to take a path that minimized the amount of it that I would need to do. That's where all the iron shards went. Cool. So I'm going to need 24 in total of those. How's my... Ah. That's right. I restocked my diamond blocks sooner or later. And then we're going to need 18 of these. Because, yeah, we might as well make our filters right now. And then, let's see here. How am I doing for seared brick? Uh, I'm doing okay-ish. I'm going to need more, like, brick brick, though. More brick ingot. So let's just make a small-ish. Like, four stacks of cobblestone worth amount. A half load. And now I've remembered that I have cheaped myself out of a, uh, out of an ingot cast. I told you that would be when I remember that I did that. Okay. You should melting pretty shortly here. Yep. There we go. But yeah, I mean, uh, have you worked your way up to the melter yet, Fox, in your point of filming? Because there is a tip I can give you for how to do smithing a bit more easy.
And it's a tip I, in fact, learned from Mr. Fancy Schmancy watching his Let's Play. Although other people have done it as well on theirs. All right, well, I can show you something real quick. Let me just grab like a half stack of copper over here. And let's see if I can remember what my optimal pattern was. It's not just showing you the optimal pattern. It's showing you... It's showing you a little trick with... Um, how to do this a bit more easily. Um, I should still have my forge set up over in here, shouldn't I? Let me see here. Yeah, I've got my old anvil and the... Uh, oh, I don't have fuel. Well, I have fuel. I just need to go and pick it up. That should do. So... What you do is you get yourself a nice big pile of nice hot ingots. Why is that no-go? Oh, it needs light. This needs to be ignited. I forget that. Dip, 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 dip. And dupe. There we go. So, yes, yes, yes. I need to go and grab some food while that's heating up, it seems. Ah, uh, what was my optimal pattern? It was like... It was like four shrink, two draw, two medium hit, I think. Four shrink, three draw, two medium hit, I think. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm gonna need to buy some more tripe soon. Oh, you you figured out how to uh, how to do the uh, the mass. Let me just get one separate so that I can experiment with that a little bit. Like I know a way to turn all thirty two of these copper into bars pretty darn quick. It's not just the optimal pattern, it's um, it's how to mass blacksmith a lot more easily. It's actually faster than, than uh, melting it if you are doing really big bulk. Is that sounding like what you figured out? God, I, li I miss living in this pretty base. Oh, I have that tailor's workshop over in here. I should move that over. It doesn't use any liquid, does it? No. Okay, let me see if I remember my pattern. It was uh, shrink, 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 draw, draw, medium hit. Right, okay, cool. So what you do is you take your big stack of copper and you do all the steps except for one. You do, okay, you, you get it over to bar and then you do for draw, draw, and then you take it out, and one at a time you do da medium hit, da medium hit, da medium hit, da medium hit. Easy as that. And you can chunk those things out in a hurry. Just make sure that you don't lose heat. Make sure that you, you keep it you keep it heated. That should help you out enormously. That is a tip that I did not know when I was in that era. And I saw it from Mr. Fancy Schmancy's videos, and I just smacked myself in the head going, that would have been so much easier. So, take this wisdom and do with it amazing things, young man. This is wisdom of the ages for you. I'm just going to throw these out. And yeah, let's take the fuel out. Take these out. 
There you go. I hope that helps you get through the grind. But yeah, literally all I was doing was I was uh, right clicking to put one bar in and then clicking the button once I had it all set up to the last hit. And if you've discovered for yourself an optimal path, that should make things much easier for you. Let's put these down here. And I think I can just throw this charcoal out. That ash, however, is definitely a keeper. Okay, and I forgot to turn the pulser on, didn't I? Yep. Oh well. That'll just be happening in the background. Ah, well. I'm glad to help. Hmm. Okay, so next... Let us... Take... A little bit more brick than what we have in there. I think we might also need some more flint clay. Yeah, it, let's let's just restock the flint clay in that. And I'm also going to need a little bit of glass. <laughs> oh, it, it's fine. I have cringe episodes of my own, too. They happen. You just keep moving forward. You'll get there eventually. Right. Need four tanks in toto. Yeah, definitely need to make myself some more brick ingot. Let's see if there's any more to grab right now. And then I should be able to take these. Oh, right. I'm also going to need dirt. Dirt bricks. Yes, yes, yes. I always forget those until the last minute. Just get those on the, on the cooker. And then over in here, make my seared heaters. Then make my malters. And then I unfortunately can't make my smalters. Until I have the dirt. Which should be coming out real soon. Mm. And yeah, technically what I'm doing right now is kind of just optional stuff. I don't need, need to finish this automation system, but I want it. I want it. So, we're doing it. I mean, it might be useful having stacks of bronze laying around too, who knows. You never know and it's nice to have. Nice to have and not need, rather than the other way around. Okay, so... I have smelters. Next, I'm gonna need four drains. And I think that's technically all I really need. Uh, no, I, I'm going to need one more casting table for the Electrum eventually. Okay. And from there, yeah, that should be enough seared brick to get me by building these things. They aren't going to be super big ones. These are just going to be little teeny tiny baby smelters like our, like our um, glass smelter that we have beneath the base. Because that is where we're going to build them. We're going to build these under the base. So, next, we need to figure out the real estate situation down here. So, unfortunately, with me moving the logistics lines down to here, 
that kind of does reduce the real estate in the underbase a little bit. But we do have this kind of nice open area over here that would be useful for that. Hmm. Yeah, so, so where is our eventually destination going to be? It's going to be over here for the bronze. So let's just kind of run that down just so that we know where to go. If I jink that over here, then yeah, that, that would make this a relatively good spot for the smelter. I even have a lava line locally right over there. Cool, cool. Okay, so let's start laying out where this is going to be. Let's just get a little bit of seared brick. I'm not going to make this super big, I don't think. Well, it needs to be kind of wide. Yeah, it's better to build these as a... Uh, as, uh, it's, it's better to favor girth over length when it comes to these smelteries down here. Girth over height, I should say. Yeah, so let's just kind of see how we can position it. Well, that would that would keep it one tall, wouldn't it, if I made it to there? Maybe that's how I want to do it. Maybe I just want to have this be a completely shallow bin, shallow basin. Hmm. Okay. Okay, yeah, 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 I'm feeling it. So this looks like it would be 18 total floor space. Hmm, that makes it one, two, three, four, five, six, six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four. Twenty-four would be a good size for this. Yeah, twenty-four blocks, so. Yes, it's it's just a nice little it's a nice little soaking basin for our for our metals. A a joyous little bath for them to relax and enjoy life. Okay, so we're definitely going to want the controller on this side. So it's going to need a sensor drain on this side. And I think we're just going to have the fuel tank on this side. Like, I don't know, right here. And the drain will just put... Right here. Yeah, that'll work. Well, I mean, I can get that prettier. Can I rotate that with a wrench? Just for the sake of pretties? Doesn't look like I can. I don't think the Billcraft wrench rotates very many blocks, though. Maybe I'll have to try that again when I get a crescent hammer or something. Nah, it doesn't look like I can get that into a pretty position. Not without, like... Okay, I could probably do it from here. There. That is completely unnecessary. It's functional on every side. I just like having the big gaping drain side of it actually facing the appropriate direction, you know? It's just... It's it's just it's it's my it's my fetish. Don't judge. Oh right, I'm gonna need liquid extractor pipes. And then get the rest of these bricks out. Just like so. Make a nice long And there we go. And that assembles the multi-block. Yes, I can see this lit up. Lovely. Cool. So then we just need to run... I think that I can even just take this over the top. Into that tank. Nice, easy as you pleasey. Then I'm just going to need to go and make my extractor pipes. Ah, 
Ah, uh, right. And we are going to need to um, to make a bucket of bronze for the filter condition on this. So let's just get 10 ingots of bronze and melt it down. Make sure the pulsar is off. Must remember to turn that pulsar off. And make our filter liquid extractor pipes. Ah, good. So just pour that out into a bouquet. And then we have a beautiful bucket of melton bronze that we can then get down in here, put the liquid extractor onto here, and program it to only whitelist liquid bronze. Cool. And that is just going to be an always on. All right, now let's clean this bucket out of our inventory. Just kind of uh, chunk that right back into the smeltery from whence it came. Get these uh, cast out once more, back into ingot form. Now we just need to run the pipe on over. So, I think I can get copper off of this side of this chest. If I... Take off of here. Yeah, and that's close enough that uh, I think this will be a convenient place, to, at least for extracting the copper. I need to make some more pipe plugs. So, then run this on down over to here. Let's run this along the floor. That'll be easier to keep that. Actually, you know what? I don't even want to run this along the floor. Let's take a trench. Make this completely walkable. Yeah, I should have been doing this the whole time. Every time I ran something along the floor, that would make the walking situation a lot easier in the base. So I think that I'm just going to use, no, I'm gonna use chess, gonna use chess, but we're gonna have, this'll be like copper, this'll be like tin. Maybe move those a bit closer. Yeah, like so. And then we're just going to run the copper right on over there. And that will be gate condition, bit of blue wire. So you will be Blue pipe wire, gate on side, on less than 25%, create blue signal. Ruin the wire out. And all the way up and then you are going to have gate and pulsar and you are going to say on blue signal which i guess it's not all the way connected on blue signal pulse the pipe there we go 
So that's copper coming on in. Now we're going to need to run tin all the way from downtown. Which I don't think I've even got tin coming out into an output box just yet. Yeah, I should sort that for all these new ones real quick. So, just... It, it's nice having a chest in the front just for easy extraction for, like, when I'm crafting stuff. So we'll put that on all of them. Plus, it'll give them all the dramatic lighting effect. Which is a, a, a bonus, question mark. So I'm going to need... One, two, three, four, five redstone blocks. Get that on out of storage. If I have it in storage. Hmm. What do you know? I have exactly that in storage. And then on down here, just kind of boop and boop. Boop and boop. Wait, that doesn't need it, does it? No, it don't. Oops. Boop. Yeah, now that I've thought of it, I really should make this thing run along the ceiling instead of... Well, that would be difficult in some places. Eh, it can stay as it is. And boop. And oh, don't they look oh so sinister now? Yes. This is the real project, F the world. Okay, so this is the tin, right? No, that's the silver. This is the tin. So let's just take that under the chest. Um, I'm gonna need to make some more pipe plugs. Let's do that before I forget about it. Let's just also make some more structural pipe while we're at it. Fill up all the things. So over here, I think it's gravel in the center and then these on down the sides. Yeah. And then just... Make a stack of pipe plug out of that. Cool. Store the spares. Alrighty then. Oh, also we're going to need some more pipe wire. Going to need a little bit more pipe wire. Let's just grab two stacks of it because I know one stack is never enough. Gonna need to start crafting some more pipe wire. Might as well do that while I'm noticing it. So let's just uh, grab a stack of lapis. Grab a stack of rod stone. Put that in the pocket so that we can keep on moving. And then get that a crafting. Yeah, on the one hand, having all these machines in such a compact area in my base is probably the source of a lot of my misery. If I spread them out some if I spread them out far so that they weren't all trying to render at the same time, I would have less lag. But on the other hand, I'm already spending so much time running back and forth between all the machines. It's, uh, it's tough. It's tough when you don't have teleporters and stuff like that. Okay, and the point of all that foolishness was 
just to come on over here. And we're gonna need to create a couple of pipe plugs over here. And from there we can extract and then start running this along the ceiling. And yeah, I think there is nothing to it but the fact that I'll need to uh, get it like along. That's looking like roughly the right spot. Let's see if I... Let's just run this down under the floor because it would have to cross under a whole lot. Yeah, maybe that should be my design philosophy from now on is that uh, the logistics line out from storage to the splits goes along the ceiling and then out of the splits into the uh, into the actual output areas it goes along the floor. That might help me keep the base walkable for a lot longer. Okay, yeah, that works out. So then the chest will need to be right here. With a nice extracting pipe over Schmier. Let's just finish running that down. This big long line like this is also why I wanted to uh, to move my logistics lines under the base so I could clear the uh, clear the top side for use with some machines. That way, um, when I start when I start making new machines again, like. I should have thought of this before I started building that machine over there. I can start building them like in the more immediate area and we'll probably be doing like minor surgery, creating those split offs just uh, in the whole mess that's already existing. So that'll be, that'll be fun. That will be a uh, fun with the capital F U. But that's essentially me complaining about my own damn design philosophy that has betrayed me all so many times. Probably because I keep on coming up with new ideas to refine it as I go. Okay, and let's kind of run this backwards from the destination. So let's get a couple of gates over on here. Gate down there. Be it a wire. You are going to say when less than 25% emit blue. And then right along we run. All the way back. Yeah. It'll definitely be nice not having to run these big old long lines up to uh, up to the destinations anymore. And you need a pulser. I'm gonna have to build some more pulsers pretty soon. Oops, not you, not you. Doesn't matter anyway. But you are gonna say wind blue signal pulse pipe. And now we run this way on downtown. Oh. I didn't run you quite far enough, did I? Nope. Well, mm, silly me. Silly me. Here. There we go. And then from there. You dupe, you dupe, you schloop, you boop, and you skadoosh. Now on here. going to say 
you're a main line, so we'll make you 50%. So then I'm probably going to need more blue pipe wire. Good thing we put some more on the cooker. Oh, no. I actually have enough for once. Huzzah. So then you and you do a shoe. And that will get tin on down to our smaltery. Ah, yes, before we forget, also should remember that I need to put in chimney over, like, right here with you coming up to here and then create extraction for that. Just into a nice little void. Keep it in line with the rest of the smeltery. Always on. And where is the closest split off of the wool line? Not you. I did definitely make the right call. Uh, making the wool line always white to make it more visually distinct. Hmm. Okay. I can work with this. I'm going to need to make a split here. And some gates. So, I can make a split right here. So, then you and you and just dupe and dupe and then win white signal pulse. And then you say on less than 50% emit white. And that should summon more wool. Excellent. Uh, this is a really short split, <laughs> but that's how you do sometimes. That's just how it goes. That is just how the cookie crumbles. So then run this along the floor to keep walkable space maximized. Extractor out here. And this is probably going to have to jank around a little bit. Depending on where our electrum ends up being produced. Hmm. Where is our electrum going to be produced? I don't know. But um, anyway, let's... Let's make the next split happen like... Here. And then just run that on down, easy as you pleasey. Get on into there. And then gate here. You're going to say win less than 50%. Summon wool. Get the white wire out. Run it on down. Get another gate and pulser. Gate and pulser. That sounds like an old-fashioned radio show or like a variety hour type thing. Gate and the pulser, yeah. Okay, next, 
we just need to get it on into. The final destination. And that is going to need a plug right there. Well, let's make it slightly less jank looking. Yeah. Well, I need to clear that last plug out anyway. Suppose that up there. Yep, there we go. And you are going to say that when you are not at least fifty percent full, summon wool. On down the line we go. The wire is struggling against me a little bit, but that's just how it goes sometimes. Eh? Why are you not connecting? Must be a render error. I imagine that the wool line is one of those is going to be one of those lines that would be nightmarish but fun to trace all the places it goes. It would probably be one of those that gives you, like, more or less a tour of the base. Hmm. Do I have any more white cable in storage? Yeah, I've got a bit. But that's also one that's going to need to be made... Going to need to put an order in for that as soon as the blue wire is done crafting. Yeah, I should have used my floor space a lot sooner. That would have made this jank a lot easier to arrange myself through. Okay, so what's your major malfunction? I, I guess it was a render error. Okay, so now need gate and pulsar again. And you say on white signal, pulse the pipe. And now we should see filter getting full. Excellent. All right, so we have tin, we have copper. Now we just need to create a three to one ratio extraction for this. So to do that, we're going to need, I'm also gonna need a clay pipe. I really should figure out... Oh, I need to shut the pulsar off. <laughs> well, that's a convenient way to find out. Rather than, like, losing a couple of metal to something. There we go. And then... Gonna need... Probably gonna need two clay pipes because we're also going to have to repeat this dance for the Electrum. Alrighty then. And over into the jank once more we go. So, clay pipe over here. And then we need to figure out our logic. So it goes at a one to three ratio. I think that, uh, yeah, I need a gold gate for this one, maybe. So gate and gate. And then I'm going to need at least two colors of wire, I think. Yeah, because it'll also need... Okay, so... We're going to need our blue cable over here. 
that'll run just to the 10. We'll use the 10 as our definer because it just goes one at a time. Oh yeah, also gonna need pulsers. Just one on here and as many as I can fit on the copper up to three. Two, I can get under there for three. Can't I? There we go, three. Convenient. <laughs> yes, melting kids. It's not just for supervillains. All right, and also we're gonna need just any old gate on this one. And I think we're actually gonna need a third color over here. And this is gonna have to be an AND gate. Is this already an AND gate? No, it's an OR gate. Right. Right, 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 right. Yeah, and we're gonna need a third color of pipe. In this case, especially. Because unlike when we were just doing this over at the uh, Galena smelters, this one is already using two colors of pipe for uh, for just handling the logic of how we're going to get it loading to ratio. So in order to create the proper limiter on solid and liquid grounds, we need a third color. And I'm probably explaining myself horribly, but my mind is... I, I, I'm suffering the minor creator seizure of my mind is running ahead of my mouth. Okay, so... So, 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 so... So... Over here... Ah, yeah, that can't be a pulser, unfortunately. Or it could... I could, no, 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 it, well, it could, mm, no, all the gates are on these top sides, so I'd need to move this gate, I think, then, if I wanted to cross it over off of there. Can I even reach that? Yes, from there. Okay, so then, if I take structural pipe through there and there, and then onto here, then I can read a gate off of here, and you then cross over to there, cool. So you are going to say on bottom, as long as you contain less than 50% emit black signal, black signal then traverses just on down to there. Okay, cool. And you say when blue signal and black signal pulse the pipe, Eventually, you say when solid on west side, that is west, right? Right. Produce blue signal. Okay, great. So now the logic on this one should be fully fulfilled. Excellent. And then I need one more piece of logic. So unfortunately, I think this needs to be a gold gate just because it's piled up so much... Uh, I mean, I could just put this on a separate gate on the bottom side, but I don't feel like going swimming again. So, first of all, combine these two. You say win blue and win black. And then just on a separate condition, you say when item traversing, produce white signal. And you then say on white signal, pulse the pipe three times using your three separate pulsers. 
and that should create an at ratio loading condition. Because that should say every time it withdraws one tin, withdraw three copper. And I'm going to have to limit this a bit more stringently, I think. That'll have to be down to 25% and that'll have to be down to 25% because this is a relatively small pool and it has that uh, big draw of three to one that isn't being controlled by the by the overall limiter. So let's give this a test. So we put the logic in here that you pulse the pipe and that is going to produce copper and tin. It should cut off pretty shortly here. Okay. It is filling up. Pollution is coming out the correct block. Liquid is not being extracted until it becomes bronze. And unfortunately, we won't be able to test the liquid limiter for a little while. I suppose I could shut this off. Yeah. That should, uh, we should see that, um, eventually black signal become a thing. Okay, so there's blue signal again. That looks like more than 25% to me. Hmm. So why you know? Why you know produce black signal? Is it just confused because there's so many different types? Hmm. Not liking this. I think I saw a similar thing happening to the steel smelter. Yeah, when when I bugged out the redstone controls, I noticed that uh, this wasn't reading properly. It did eventually read. It just like, I think it was reading at 75%, not 25% for whatever reason. So let, let's just see if this thing, it won't take too terribly long to fill up. I apologize for uh, satisfying my neuroses, potentially unnecessarily, but uh, I want to make sure that this thing won't be overflowing any which way. Yeah, this is definitely more than 25% full. It's almost 50% full. So those gates are, that gate in particular is not reading this one properly for whatever reason. Okay, so that's on the bottom side, yeah. Wait, did I determine that it needs to be facing inwards into the, uh, into the actual, um, like it needs to be facing the tank properly. If I can, if I can sneak that in there any which way. Oh, this is going to be awkward. This is going to be sneaky. If I can just, ah, oh, I don't think I can reach it. It's just blocked off by the by the lip of the smelter. Oh well, we'll see if this we'll see if this turns on eventually. It's really not. Hmm. Oh no, wait, there it goes. There it goes. Okay, so the liquid melter the liquid limiter is working technically. Eh, it stops it from getting all the way full. That's all I care about in the end. So yeah, we have a nice little bronze bathtub here. Fills up nice and full when it shouldn't. And now we have liquid bronze coming out. And let's see if that's filling the system to our specification. Yep, a nice beautiful column of liquid bronze coming out here. Why is it no? Is that infected? Please don't tell me that's infected. That might be the case. You might be right. Yeah. Hmm. 
That's unfortunate if true. Okay, well. At least it looks like the ingots are being made. Yeah, we've got... Oh, okay. Ingots, blocks coming in. And gears coming in. It just wasn't rendering properly for whatever reason. Okay, so... Bronze is being made and it's being... is being loaded. This is excellent news. And next up, I think that I'm not going to automate the mechanical components today. I'm just going to finish automating up the Electrum. That sounds like a plan to me. So, where can I load the Electrum in here? I guess I can load it in here. Yeah, that'll do. So... Right there, casting table. And there should be some sort of space down. Mm, maybe on that side. Yeah, that'll do. I mean, there's cables down there, but I can work around those, hopefully. So that'll have to be a bit of a jank. Oops. Nope, 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 nope. How dare you? How dare you even suggest that that is what I intended to do? You should read my mind, Pipes. I thought I was one with you. I thought that... I thought that, uh, I understood your ways. Okay, that should... Yeah, that'll get it into there. And as always, let's just troll our future selves by stealing an ingot cast. Let's get caught in our own machinery. Oh. Yeah. Let me guess, you uh, you tried to tap into the caldera and it didn't go well? Okay, so now, where is that coming from? Okay. Okay. Hmm. I can kind of get that down here. Yeah. And unfortunately, I think this is going to have to be a bit of a, a long extraction. Because, yeah, we're just going to build the smeltery right here. Ah, uh, yeah. Dwarf Fortress's fluid pressure. <laughs> it's almost as janky and unpredictable as real fluid pressure. It surprises you in so many ways. It almost seems like it, like it, um, like it even simulates capillary action, but that's just because it's so jank <laughs> and arcane. Yeah. Okay, I should have some more. Oh, I have some fluid pipe in here. Cool. Um, but that's probably not enough. Let's make some additional... I should have some spare slime in here, right? Yeah. And then... Make me some more fluid pipes. All right. We're also going to need... Yeah, I have fluid extractor. Clay transport pipe. I should... I'm going to need some more pulsers. That's what I'm going to need. Let's 
go ahead and make those real quick. So just grab four stacks of stick. Turn those into a stack of gears. Turn that into however many redstone engines it'll let me. More than that. We can pick up some more uh, some more of this. There we go. And then go and turn those into pulsers. I think I might need more iron in the lasers. Is the iron on? I don't think it is. I just let that get a little full. Oh, I really wish I had comparators already so that I could just let my neuroses about overflowing lie. Yeah, those will blast together real quick. Ooh, nice. The engines are giving us a beautiful wave motion. It's lovely when that happens. It looks like it's spreading out from the central... I suppose it would, because... They're all on program to uh, only supply when demand, so the demand signal will be coming like down the pipe and outwards like that. So yeah, it creates that nice wave motion. Neat. Okay, and we're probably going to need a couple stacks of blue wire. We're probably going to need some more transport pipe too. Let's get that white wire cooking. Now that I'm thinking about it. So, uh, let's just use all the bone meal I have. And grab some more redstone for good measure. Ah, uh, we should turn the redstone off. Turn that one off. And any others that are in need of deactivation. Pretty good. Me? Oh, you must still be filling up your chests, right? Yeah, you are. You shouldn't fill up a chest by now. Is something wrong? Let's see here. I'm not seeing any diamonds or electrotrine in the pipe. What's gone wrong? What did I screw up? Okay. So there's nothing in the crucer. The Okay, you're not producing redstone signal. So why are you off? You got power. Why you turn off? I guess let's try. Okay, what's going on? What is going on here? Did I accidentally disconnect the power somewhere down in the utilidor? I accidentally disconnected the power somewhere in the utilidor. Right. I think I... I think I might vaguely remember doing that. Shoot. Okay, so... 
Let's just... Can I... There. And then there. And then... Huh. There? No, you can't. I guess then... You would have to connect somewhere else. Like there. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. That should start the system up again. Yeah, I hear that crusher. And this is why we do occasional system checks. Because our own idiocy is out to get us. I can probably just throw out that gravel I have in my pocket. Okay, back down underground. So, actually up here for a while. Because I haven't started a line of silver yet. Gold I'm extracting for some purposes already, but this is silver. No, that's tin. This is silver. Okay, and we'll get you when we go under. And that's just going to require a couple of plugs. There and there. That is going to require an extractor. We're going to need a couple of them. Just down there. And then we need to start running pipe. So that is, um, where's the nearest gold split off? Wait, have I run gold to anywhere yet? I don't know if I have. No, I haven't. Well, I've already cleared out the space though, so that's easy. We just need to remember our plug. And run that out, too. Okay, so... The smelter will be somewhere in this neighborhood over here. I think I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller than the other one. Just because it has less complications to deal with. How are you doing? Have you jammed up at all yet? No. Nah. You're doing good. You're doing real good. And it looks like it's turned off because, yeah, it must be looking at the copper. Or the tin or whatever's... Maybe it looks at whatever's first. So if I switch that to copper, maybe it'll get a more accurate reading. Because so long as it's... So long as it's still filling up the ingots and stuff. It shouldn't ever be full, full. Eh, we'll see. We'll see. So let's start laying out this smelter over here. Oh, right. I meant to load up the lasers. That's why I have a, a bit of extra junk in my pocket. Ah, okay. Laser. No, not blue. White. And let's completely stock ourselves up on that too, just while we're here. Okay. So. 
So, let's make this a relatively small one. Well, we could just make it the same size. Yeah, 18 is probably good enough. Floor size of 18, yeah. Okay. Just like so. And then I can put like a tank just straight in line with it right here. A drain right here. And that'll just be running into the output. Yeah, that's fluid pipe. And then on down. And then if I just along the ceiling over there, that'll get fuel into the system. And we should be done with fluid pipes for the moment. Oh, this is also convenient. When I'm running pipes along the floor, I can drink through them. Yes, the design's really coming together now. All right. And our controller will be right here. And unfortunately, that's going to cover up a bit of lighting, so we'll have to replace that real quick. The lighting down here isn't on, like, any special spacing or anything. It's just wherever it's needed. It's the upstairs that we try and make pretty. All right, and that assembles. Excellent. Excellent. And unfortunately, I'm out of chests. Yeah, out of out of chests. So time to make some more of that. Let's just, you know, while we're here, let's untroll myself and make a uh, another ingot cast. Let's also uh, just make like two stacks worth of nuggets. Yes. Should be able to... That'll melt well before the iron does. And then I can just leave that pulser on. And that'll make me some lovely, lovely nugs that I can then turn into, like, we'll make a goodly amount of chests. So, change this for sequoia wood. Here comes the damn nugs. So, the amount that I put in should make 32, but unfortunately the buckets only go five at a time. So, we're going to need one, two, three, four, five, six buckets of water. And that should make us 30 chests. How you doing? You're getting there, you're getting there. Alright. 
I could make a little bit more than that because I have some nuggets in there. Yeah. Oh, I would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that would just make two. Yeah, never mind. This is good enough. Let's not screw up our count now. Y'all done? Cool. All right. And then back into here. So why ain't you connecting to that drain? You just need to... There you go. It just didn't like the fact that I placed it before it was ready. So you, of course, will be always on. Now, we're going to create a similar setup as to our bronze over there. We're just going to have two chests right over here. And this is going to be a much, much simpler setup, thankfully. Oh, right, I need a clay pipe. Always got to forget something. It's bad luck otherwise. Yeah, that's my excuse. Oh, wait, I had it on me. <laughs> oh, well. I didn't trust myself to have the plan in mind. There we go. And now we start with the gates. So we're going to need two or gates and we're going to need one and gate which we already have in our hand and gate is going to go over here or gates can just go over there we're going to need at least two pulsers they're already in my pocket let's just keep the top side free for for general purposes sake Okay, so it doesn't particularly matter which side the blue side goes to. I guess just for the sake of uh, symmetry with the other side, we'll make it this side. And you are going to say, when contains less than 50% solid, emit blue signal. You are going to say, when blue signal and when black signal eventually. All right, we need to remember to... Uh, set up our I guess that I need to shape this differently don't I yeah I need to shape this so that the white signal from this thing um, can eventually escape might as well do that now run that over okay so when and and oh yeah now this because I changed sides in my indecisiveness, now this needs to be the AND gate. Where'd you go? And... So, wind, blue, and black signal, pulse pipe. We won't turn that on just yet. Oh, right, this needs to be... like a drain, yaw. Yeah. Cool. And actually, I think that means that I can just run that straight under, can't I? So if I uh, grab some structure pipe, just like so, then hopefully I can sneak a gate onto it, like right there. Then a little bit of black wire on down cross up okay and then you say when contains less than 25 percent emit black signal sweet all right
And then I just need one last piece of logic now that I know that the top side won't be used. I can just put it on there. And you are going to say, when item traversing, emit white. Shmeen smile over here. You are going to say, when you receive white signal, create single pulse. Okay. And that should create a guaranteed even one-to-one -one split that is properly input limited. Now we just need to run the gold and silver over to here. And unfortunately, this is kind of right on a line of glowstone, isn't it? So we'll, we'll just kind of uh, jank it over just for the sake of convenience. Gonna need to make some more transport pipe. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. So where is our box of gold? Somewhere up here. There we go. Let's just... Let's just make a full dang batch. Let's make lots. But yeah, I think between episodes, I'm going to clean up the rat's nest down here a little bit. Put some of those fluid pipes inset into the floor to make the area more walkable. Definitely going to try and clean that up and make that easier to navigate a little bit. It won't be any more pretty. It's still going to be a jank. I forgot to turn my Discord notifications off. Hmm. I'll pick that up in just a moment. Meaning, after I finish with the stream. <laughs> okay. There we go. Yes, I'm sorry about that. That is why I say, oops, I forgot to turn my Discord up, because I know that that effectively a Discord notification is pretty much an automatic troll to anyone listening. I'm just trying to let you know that you aren't crazy. It was me, not you. Okay, so... With a big bundle of pipes in hand... Let us now complete the logistics dance. So, gold is going to have to run down a ways. I can find where that is again. All right, it's going to have to run down. Like, all the way down to here, pretty much. Yeah, that, that line of... Uh, that line of um, glowstone is actually helping us out a little bit here. Uh, thankfully, my email doesn't make a noise. It just it just creates a little icon in my web browser. Okay, and down we go. Excellent. 
Now I need to actually program this, don't I? Yeah. So that's going to need a couple of gates. Just one down here with some blue wire. You're going to say when contains less than 50% emit blue signal. Turn it back to daytime so I don't freeze to death. Oops. Yeah. Placing it in all the wrong places. There we go. So, first summon the gold from here. Next, summon the gold to the new destination. Yes, we definitely made the right call stocking up on blue pipe. Okay. And then last bit of logic for now over here. You're going to say when it contains less than 25% emit blue signal. And just to double check, I haven't, yeah, I haven't completed the logic on this system yet. Okay, so. Next, we need to run the silver over. Similar issue. So let's just, uh, let's get a couple of gates out. So, gate over there, blue pipe wire. If I can get it onto the pipe, there we go. And you are going to say when chest less 25%, create blue signal. And now we just run it on down. Okay, and then we put our split chest here. Yeah, this new this new arrangement system is definitely looking a lot neater. In both the sense of actual physical neatness and in the sense of ooh, neat. Okay, and you are going to say on blue signal pulse pipe. And now we just run you all the way down. It's also convenient that I can kind of just hold down the right mouse button and it, it more or less works for laying it down quickly. Snake the cable on down. There we go. Now I'm going to need to pick up some more blue pipe, as expected. All according to plan, of course.
now. Excellent. We've got a lovely stock of all the pipes just awaiting for us. And now we just need to run blue pipe on down to the to the box o silver so you are going to say less than 50% create blue signal and then we run you down Nice and easy and simple. If the blue pipe will goddamn connect. There we go. And now we say on blue signal pulse pipe. And that should get silver all the way on down. Beauteous. Okay. Oh, and how dare I almost forget we need the pollution filter. Yes, we wouldn't want to forget that. Okay. And then... Gonna need extraction. Gonna need voiding. There we go. Next, we just need to... I mean, I could just... Why do you have a block of silver down here? What is that block of silver pollution doing in my base? Did that just appear at an inopportune moment? Or is that the harbinger of something more sinister? Hmm. Don't know. But you know what I could do? Is, um... I could just extract straight off of that filter there. So you are filling to 50%, right? Cool. So then if I put... gate on you and a bit of wire I can create an artificial not condition so first of all say when contains less than 25 percent emit blue signal and next on the other end say when not blue then pulse the pipe and Oh, it would also need a third condition. Yeah, it would need to be an AND gate with a third condition. So we're going to need one of our gold gates. Just kind of get on over here. And we're going to, of course, use white pipe wire to get down off of this thing. And then just put our OR gate on there. You're going to say when less than 50% emit white. So then you can say, first of all, when less than 25% emit blue. And then on the AND conditional, we're going to say when white... And when not blue, pulse the pipe. And just look at that. 
we've now sneakily snuck the wool out of there. And so what this should do in total is because this is looking for when it's not blue and when this is saying emit blue when less than 25%, this will mean that this will stop when the filter gets below one quarter full. We should see that pretty shortly here. No, it's keeping up, unfortunately. Well, I, I can artificially induce that. Yeah, now see, now it's stopped and it won't continue. So this filter will never empty out. It will never empty out from this process, but it will keep this filter halfway full. And that's just a, a kind of sneaky way to avoid giving myself a, uh... oh, hello, computer wizard. Yeah, we're almost done creating the next step of the, of the plan. I, I'm sorry, I haven't been entertaining enough to keep you awake. I've been kind of concentrating on all this technical bits and bobs. But yes, if my calculations are correct, we should have Electrum now. Oh, wait, shoot, 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 shoot. We don't have Electrum now. I didn't filter the extraction pipe. Turn that off. Turn that off. We need to filter that. At least it should be uh, piling up a nice amount of Electrum, though. All the controls should be working. Okay. So now we just need to go and get a bucket of Electrum in order to filter this system. I don't think I have enough Electrum sitting up in the base to do that. Well, let's grab the casting table and let's just get it right off the tee. Let's just make a spare one. It's always useful to have a little, uh, a few casting tables sitting around anyway. Ah, well. Man, don't don't feel bad if you need to if you just need to go, man. Get rest. Don't stay up on my account. This is just this is just a nice long derp stream. This is me putting off quest advancement even more just for my own arbitrary goal of having completely automated um completely automated engineering blocks. Okay, so let's let's disconnect the liquid line for now, just so that we don't just so that we don't um, completely evacuate all of our electrum. Okay, you're on electrum right now, right? Cool. So put bouquet in there, then give it a pulse until that's full. Sweet. And then we can set the filter onto this properly. Cool. And then we can just dump that bucket of Electrum back in there. Reconnect the pipe. And now it is filtered so we can just turn that on and we have automated Electrum. Beauteous. And, oh, uh, yes, we have little smoke particles coming up through the floor. And there it goes up into there. And look at that. Now, because I already loaded some wood into here before, we should start seeing that, yeah, it's creating heavy engineering blocks for us now. So... In theory, then, if I were to make a quick automation for the steel mechanical components, then everything but wood would be fully automated in this thing. Do I have a place that I can load that into here? Huh. I might be kind of out of viable outputs on here. <laughs> hmm. 
might need to build it a bit taller. Maybe. Kinda. Well, okay, no, 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 no. If, okay, so there can be a hopper there. That could be for steel mechanical components. I just need one more spot. Hmm. And I don't think I have one. I think this thing is gonna be maxed out. Hmm. Well, maybe it'll just be that it, it doesn't get wood automatically. Or maybe, maybe by the time, maybe by the time I can automate wood, I'll have a better solution. Well, regardless, regardless, I think that this, this wonderfully, increasingly jank machine that is now producing us tons of engineering blocks very, very quickly is complete enough for today. Yep, I think that we've reached a good stopping point. So, between episodes, I will, um, I, I will deconstruct the rat's nest of cables and neaten it out a little bit under the base. Not a whole lot. I don't think... I, I think that at this point it has uh, reached the point of no return in terms of being a rat's nest. It will always be messy. But I'll clean it up a little bit. I'll at the very least run a bunch of pipes down along the floor now to increase the walkability of the area. And... I think that I can just turn all these into... Uh, Let's see here. I should be using Celtic as my default decor block anyway. There we go. And there, yeah. So between episodes, I will do that. I will, what have I got extra in here? Oh, I accidentally split the void pipes. There we go. There, inventory all clean. So yeah, I'll clean up the rats a little bit between the next episode. And next episode, we will finish off the the mechanization of this artisan we'll make a quick automation for um for the mechanical components it's just going to be a mirror of the system it shouldn't take terribly long and we will finally start on proper quest advancement that's right it is time next episode we will finally finally be looking into the quest book and seeing what we need to do to get farther into the game. So, these are exciting times, everyone. At last, at last, we are breaking free. We're breaking the conditioning, yes. So, Computer Wizard, get some sleep. 12th Century Fox, I hope that uh, that blacksmithing tip that I gave you treats you well. I hope it's useful to you. And uh, you keep on keeping on, man. And everyone else out there, have yourself a beautiful day. Have yourself a lovely evening. And I will see you on the next time. Good night, everybody.